one of the key benefits of a wireless WAN is its plug and play nature. So it is not only simple to deploy, it only requires power and mounts on power poles, light poles at substations, but it's also standards based. So deploying a wireless WAN provides Ethernet connectivity for universal connections to devices like network cameras or grid devices, RTUs and IEDs for SCADA. They can provide serial connectivity through an adapter to connect legacy applications and has a whole protocol soup of support for legacy and future applications. So not only IP with IPv4 and v6, but also support for applications like DNP3, NCC12, IEC61850, Modbus, and others. There are three specific roles for the wireless WAN. The first is providing a network for substation automation. And these are for applications like SCADA within the substation, video feeds for monitoring, a secure Wi-Fi hotspot for workforce mobility, all without monthly fees since it is a private communications network. And this is all what we consider inside the fence. There's the outside the fence communication, which is number three here, which is networking for distribution automation. And this is extending the network out to distribution devices like transformers, capacitor banks, reclosers, voltage regulators, to provide SCADA out to the distribution network, enable microgrids, and being able to centrally monitor and configure the feeder. Another application that ties into this is the ability to backhaul the AMI network. And again, since it's a completely private network, the utility has total management and control of the deployment and scaling. The bandwidth and coverage is easy without any cellular fees tied to the AMI network. So we'll start off by talking about the substation communication. What this slide represents is a, an example of a deployment where there are a variety of different substations, some already connected with fiber and SCADA communications, some connected with lease lines that have SCADA represented in green, and then in purple, substations that just simply don't have any kind of communications to the substation. So the ones in yellow here already have fiber, green have lease lines, purple, no communication. Now with a wireless WAN deployed and interconnecting these substations, you now have at the fiber-based substations deploying a gateway to start the wireless WAN network. The green substations where lease lines are deployed or where extenders go to provide connectivity with a private high bandwidth network, and then the network extends out even to the substations that previously had no communications whatsoever. By connecting all substations with two-way communications through a wireless WAN, you now have broadband connectivity with redundant self-healing links that enable applications such as SCADA. So there are three different classes of substations we talked about. At the fiber substations, of course, we're going to keep SCADA running over that fiber network. And this is an ideal place to start the wireless WAN by deploying a gateway. And that gateway, of course, now provides the ability to provide a backup to the fiber network through the wireless mesh network. At the modem or lease line substations, this is an ideal place to deploy the extender for the wireless WAN. And by doing so, you've upgraded the communications from lease lines to broadband connectivity with redundancy and have eliminated the monthly lease line operating expenses. So for lease lines that can run from $200 to $600 a month, the return on investment is very quick. And then, of course, at the substations that have no connectivity, deploying an extender allows you to extend SCADA applications to those substations, as well as providing broadband and redundancy, again, without the operating expenses. So with an extender deployed at a substation, this now enables inside the fence communications to a variety of different devices. Through standard Ethernet connectivity, the substation now has the ability to support multiple protocols, a variety of different IP protocols, DMP3, 61850, Modbus, and so forth. It can be extended out to IEDs, RTUs, as well as devices like video surveillance cameras. Ethernet can also provide 
the ability to connect serial devices through a serial to Ethernet adapter. And so legacy devices that require serial connectivity can use this with protocols like Modbus and DNP3. The substation extender can also provide a secure Wi-Fi hotspot to enable workforce mobility. So technicians out at the substation now have a secure way of communicating back with central applications and with centralized personnel. Finally, there's ability to provide point-to-multipoint connectivity. So for larger substations, through point-to-multipoint, it extends that Ethernet serial and Wi-Fi connectivity to other areas throughout a substation. That same substation extender also provides the ability to communicate from the substation. The substation extender can provide links out to other substations, which is one of the main benefits of a mesh. So you can continue to link together substation in a daisy chain fashion to provide communications to all substations. And this is enabled not only through the mesh, but with these long range links that can go up to 10 miles. You can now extend this out into rural areas and touch substations that may never have had communications before. That same substation extender also provides the bridge into the AMI network. And so with an integrated AMI collector, it now forms the basis for an RF mesh to interconnect the NAN, the neighborhood area network, with all of the electric and gas meters on that communications tier which of course also starts to provide the gateway into the home area network, which is the the third tier of a multi-tier architecture. The substation extender also provides the ability to communicate from the substation to distribution assets and what we call distribution networking. And this enables applications like SCADA for distribution devices, microgrids, and feeder reconfiguration. And a fourth option, which some utilities are looking at, others are not interested in, but the ability to provide rural broadband internet access to subscribers who are in rural territories, the utilities, and most of this is either co-ops or municipalities, can use that substation to provide connectivity to rural consumers who may not have any other options for internet and broadband connectivity. 